Weekend Warriors. Welcome back to the workshop. Uh, in the last video that I posted up, we did a little bit more bottle craft and we cut bottles and we took a look at a couple of the jigs we use, but we haven't actually built one of the jigs on, on video yet. And so I got taken a look at, at the jig that I did and how I went about it. And I thought, you know, this is getting away from what we founded the, the workshop on. And that was cheap, easy, and being able to do it with the basic tools, you know, that we did in the very first video. So getting back to that, we're going to build uh, two, two jigs, or you're going to see two jigs that I've built. And we're going to build one of them on video, and uh, we'll get right on that. So without wasting any more time, you stand by, and I'll redo the camera. So hang on. Okay. So what I have here is, of course, the original jig. You might recognize it from the first two videos. Uh, missing the cutter. I'll remove that for the moment. But you can see it's got the, the saddle for the bottle. It's got the something for the bottle to, to ride against when you're cutting it. Uh, one one backstop, and then you can see that I'm able to make that wiggle, wiggle a little bit. And then, of course, the saddle for holding the uh, drill for polishing the edges. Well, this was okay. It worked. It, it was a good prototype, but now it's junk. It has evolved, well, into this guy here. Now, this guy is a little bit more simple. It doesn't take quite as much uh, angle cutting or, or anything like that. As a matter of fact, it's made out of 1x2s, a piece of 12-inch 1x12, uh, and some more 1x2s and 1x2 and 1x2. You have, you have two saddles with a 45-degree angle cut into them, which is done simply on a router table using a chamfer bit. And if you've, if you've built the very first couple of projects uh, from the Weekend Warriors Workshop, well, then you have a router table and you have the saw table for doing all this cutting. Of course, it, it still has the, the cutting arm. I've changed the uh, kind of, of glass cutter that I'm using. Uh, this, is, this is a flat type, and I've purchased myself a Sheffield. Uh, glass cutter, which has actually a, a rotating head with six cutters on it. So when one starts to dull, you just rotate the head. Now it's about twice as much, uh, twice as expensive as that orange one that I had, but it has six cutting heads, so it's going to last six times longer than that orange one that I had. So definitely well worth the difference in the price. Um, instead of having a screw that I've got to line up with the center of the bottle, I've got a block that sits down inside the saddle and then locks into place with the use of a clamp. With that in there, it's not going to move. And it, it provides enough, uh, depending on which side you use, you can use the end block or you can use use it on edge like that depending on the size of the bottle but it provides a nice flat surface for the bottle bottle to write against while you're while you're scoring it so it's you know I, I started out with a fancy 45 degree cut and all kinds of stuff then I realized you know a piece of 2x4 is going to fit in there even better so a 6 inch 2x4 sitting down in there and of course the drill saddle it's the same thing, one by two with 45 degree chamfers, and once again, the plumber's clamp going through it. So there's our evolution. Now, this project is more technique than it is really uh, having to have fancy tools or anything like that. So what do we need to build one? Well, we need once again a flat surface. A piece of 1x12, in this case this is a, a piece of plywood that just happens to be 1x12. Um, and then a stack of 1x2. So one stick of 1x2 is, is probably plenty for this job. Now in my case I had a bunch of, of uh, 1x6 scraps laying around. So the first thing I did was cut up my 1x2s. 
and you see it now, I hope. And then for the pieces that needed the chamfer, I added the chamfer. After that, I cut to length, and that brought me to what you've seen here. Now, in between there, I drilled the hole for my plumber's clamp to go through for my drill saddle, and I drilled the holes for the cutting arm to, to pivot on. And of course, I drilled the hole through the pivot arm itself. Now it's just a matter of technique on building, and that's a piece of cake. You don't even really need to use a ruler at this point, because it's all based on one and a half inches. A one by two is one and a half inches wide. So that's pretty much the basis I used to measure everything. Now I did have to use a square, and, um, and that was for basically one piece. So the rest of it goes easy. So let's go ahead and build it, and you can see how easy it was. Hang on. Okay, so first thing we're going to need to do is put together our cutting arm. Now here's our, our bottle saddle. Here's our drill saddle. We're going to put those aside for the moment. Here are the pieces for our cutting arm. So what we're going to do, since we've already drilled our holes, now hole positions and all that, are on the plans, and the plan, plans are free to download at www.craftedbychristopher.com. Look under projects and plans, and I'm sure you'll be able to find them. All right. So, as I said, first thing we're going to do is assemble the cutting arm. And let me make sure I'm assembling this in the right order, as, as I had planned. And nope, I'm not. Of course, I've dry fit this once already. Okay. So if you've, uh, if you follow the plans, it'll all just pop right together and you won't have to worry too much about direction or anything like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the cutting arm into place. And this is basically just going to be a placeholder for me. I'll tighten that down. And this is just a carriage bolt going through. The holes are quarter inch, quarter inch in diameter. So now I've tightened that down. It's not going to go anywhere. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put it up straight up just to get it out of my way. Because this is acting as a clamp to give me the proper width here. Now I'm going to take a base. And I'm going to fit the base in between the two. And I actually forgot something. Now, what's that something? A bit of glue. Because on the base part, I'm going to need to put a touch of glue. And I've let my glue coat over here. There we go. So just a touch of glue here. Touch of glue there. Touch of glue down there. Okay, we're going to back this off just a little bit so we don't just smear the glue. And we're going to put our base piece in. And this is just a, a three inch block. And I'll tighten it up back here again. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my uh, nail gun to, to set these guys in place. You don't have to have a nail gun. You can, you can use, you know, put it in with brads by hand. Okay, and what I'm doing right this second is I'm making sure that my brace pieces have plenty of room here so these guys are actually sitting centered on the base block. And the base block is all all the way down, and everybody's happy here. Make sure that's nice and tight. I'm going to come along with a clamp here and clamp her up, making sure I leave plenty of room and making sure I'm nice and flush on the bottom. 
And now I can use my brad gun, whoops, to pop these into place. So, reach across, take my brad gun, and And there we go. Simple as that. Now the, the basic, oops, didn't need to undo that wing nut. All right, the basic cutting block is taken care of and we can set this guy out of the way. Next piece we want to get into place is the bottle saddle. Now the bottle saddle in this one, each rail happens to be 11 inches long. And I want them spaced one and a half inches. So one piece of one by two width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this guy down. I'm going to take my clamp again. I'm going to clamp this to the edge. I'm going to clamp the whole thing down to the edge of the table. Now I'll take my rail, I'll put it down get it into position, which allows me to put my spacer block into position. And once the spacer block is in position, I'll take a clamp and I'll clamp it in place. Would help if my clamp wasn't quite so wide. Now if I don't get this exact on the edge, it's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to hurt anything at all. And you'll see why when we start putting things completely together. So there's a clamp there. And there's a clamp there. So now my spacer block's not going to go anywhere. Now I can put the other rail into place and go grab one more clamp. Okay, once again, I'll make sure that my rails are about where I want them to be. Whoops. And once again, one thing I forgot. Bit of glue on my rails. Now I could make this look really pretty and spend a lot of time sanding on it and stuff right now, but that's for another time, I think. So there's one rail. There's the next rail, making sure that my chamfered edges are on the inside, of course. Now I'll put my clamp back on. And guess what? It's time to set a couple of brads into the rail. Uh, one more time in front of the camera. Keep an eye out on what I'm doing. Okay. And that's it, clamps off, get the spacer out of there. Now we're ready to mount the cutting arm. Here's our cutting arm back again. And the cutting arm we're gonna mount flush with the edge and an inch and a half from the, the uh, saddle. So we'll make sure that it is square with the saddle. And it is. We'll then make with some more glue. And it really doesn't matter which direction you put it because everything should be cut square the same way. Once again, we'll make sure that it is square with the, with the saddle. And with it square to the saddle, and an inch, inch and a half off the saddle, 
we'll go ahead and put a couple of rads down. Once again, make sure that we didn't move it too much when we did that. And it looks good to me still. And now I'm going to throw a couple up from the bottom. And make sure I'm hitting where I want to hit. There we go. Once again, you can do this with nails. You can do this with screws. I just finding, since I've got the tools, I've got the brad nailer, using brads is quickest. Okay. So let's get this spacer out of there. Because that spacer, oops, uh, happens to be one of the reinforcements, the anti-twist reinforcements for the cutting arm. So, a little bit of glue, pop it on down, bang, bang, and a couple toenails into the base block. There we go. And we'll do the same thing on the back side. Whoops, almost forgot. A little bit of glue on the bottom part here. There we go. Now the cutting arm uh, is in place. Last thing we have to do is the drill saddle. And the drill saddle we do just like we did the, uh, the uh, bottle saddle. One more just for grit. Okay, flush with the edge. Pull the clamps off. Now my drill saddle's in place, my bottle saddle's in place. Now it's just a matter of kind of letting it dry up and trying her out, of course, and mounting the, uh, the glass cutter. And we'll come back to that when everything's okay. dry. It had a chance to sit overnight. Uh, granddaughter number two came to visit yesterday, so that pretty well put an end to any, uh, any production. As you can see, I did add some blocks and some clamps just to make sure everything got held nice and firmly in place while it was gluing up. So we can pop those, get them out of the way. And while I was at it, I also put in the plumber's clamp. So I'm all ready to mount up my drill. Before I go any further, I need to put the uh, glass cutter in place. Now, to do that, first thing I did was drill a hole dead center in my glass cutter. So that's where I'm gonna, how I'm going to mount the thing. And I'm actually using a Craig self-tapping pocket screw for this. Why? Because I like the drive they use. I like the nice flat broad head they have. They've got a nice big washer head here. So it's going to hold it in place. Now all I'm going to do is sort of figure out where I'm going to mount it. And what I want to do is I want to make sure, and I'm going for a larger size bottle here. This is a Pellegrino water bottle. And I want to get it centered on the, uh, on the cutter arm. 
and make sure that I can get a straight down cut. And so, that's about where I'm going to mount it. So now it's just a matter, matter of doing so. So I'll stick the screw through. it over there like that and that's going to work out real well for me. Snug it down. So now I've got my stopper block that the bottom of the bottle can roll on and what I'll do before I start cutting bottles is I'll make sure that the stopper block is flush to the bottom of the barrel or par bottom of the bottle, pardon me. Uh, so it's not, it doesn't have an angle or anything on it, so the bottle can roll nice and smoothly on it. And now I'll use the flexibility of the wood to act as the clamp for the, uh, for the bottom, for the base there. Now I'll add a little bit of lubricant. A light, light oil is best, but I don't have a, any of my uh, normal light oil to drip. So I'm going to give it a little squirt with just some ultra lube here. You just, whoops, you just want to lube the oil up a little bit. Make sure it rolls nice and smoothly, doesn't have any dirt on it. And here it goes. Let me uh, kind of get to the other side of the, the camera here, or let's just move the camera a little bit closer, shall we? So now, bring the cutter wheel down. You don't press down real hard. You don't want to make a, a, uh, a uh, real deep score. Just a light score. You just want to hear a slight crunching of glass. Just like this. And one time around is enough. You should hear a crunch when you when you meet at the end. And I went just above the little seam here, so I'm going to have a little lip on the bottle at the end, but it's uh, a nice score all the way around. Now let's try it on a smaller bottle. Here's another Mike's Hard Lemonade bottle. I'm going to push that up to where I would normally cut. Readjust my clamp. And do the same thing. Making sure that my cutter wheel is on the glass. And round and round we go. Something moved. No, it didn't. I just didn't get the crunch. That's all. I still have a single line score all the way around. So that part fits real good. Now I can come and get my drill. Mount it up in the right place.
Get that nice and snug, and there we go. The jig is complete and ready to use. Let's cut one more bottle, just, just for grins. Once again, I want to make sure that this guy is flush to the bottom of the bottle. And go again. Crunch. And there we go. That one was a little bit deeper. I pressed a little bit hard on that. So it'll take me just a little bit longer to make that a smooth edge. All right, now we'll part the bottles. Zero. All right, so we got to work with the round bottles. Now, what if we have a square bottle? Well, now, a square bottle isn't going to work in this one very well at all. It's going to be kind of hard to work it out. So we have another one. Now, the basic design. This is just one by six, uh, about 14 inches long, about 11 inches high. I use my router to cut the grooves, and I've got a video on press building techniques where I go through cutting grooves, so we don't need to do that again. I made a little 1x2 carriage with carriage bolts going through it, and that does nothing but hold my, uh, my uh, glass cutter in place. Now, I haven't drilled out the center of this one yet because this was the proof of concept. So, just to work it, you set your height. Now, I'm going to make this into a self-watering planter, so and it happens to be a square Jim Beam bottle. So now all we do is run it across the blade. Just like this. Applying pressure on the bottle, even with the blade. And there we go. We got a score all the way around. I might need to get the corners a little bit better, but on the flats, I got a nice score line. So all I'm going to do is kind of work these corners around. Okay, so I know my corners are well scored. And this is also the same way you would do a Jack Daniels bottle, of course. So now my, my, the other jig, jig number two, can go away. Now if this, I was doing a large round bottle, uh, oh say in the Grey Goose range, I would actually use this stick on the side here that I've got just pivoting to set this bottle so it holds it in the center of the cutting wheel. And then I would just clamp it down with a clamp and rock and roll. I just go around all the way around cutting, provided it doesn't fit the other jig. So now let's heat and go here and get this bottle popped. I'll be back when it is. The way and everything that doesn't look good here will sand nice and smooth and I'll have another planter to go along with my Jack Daniels version. So that's it. Two cutting jigs. You can cut square bottles, you can cut round bottles, you can cut big wine bottles, you can cut little bottles, you can cut the necks on the bottles. It all works good. Um, so that's about it. I think we're about done with, with uh, uh, bottle craft except for maybe showing off some work a little bit later. The plans will end up on the website, I, I promise. www.craftedbychristopher.com uh, Until I come up with another project, y'all keep up the good fight, and I will see you when I see you. Bye!